Hi everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Today's video is gonna be a quick one, but I'm gonna show you something that I did that maybe wasn't so smart. Let's get right to it. So if you're a regular viewer to my channel, you're well aware that I like to order things from China. And here's AliExpress, which is one of my favorite sites that I seem to order from a lot. About four months ago, I was having some issues with some fake chips, and I made a couple different videos about it. These were SRAM chips that I bought from AliExpress to use on my Tandy 1000 EX memory expansion board. But while prototyping my board, I had a ton of trouble getting these Alliance SRAM chips just to work reliably. And I think I came to the conclusion that while they're maybe not fake, they're rebadged marginal parts or something like that, because once I ordered the real thing from a local reseller, everything worked perfectly, even with my designs. So that brings me to what I did that was kind of stupid. I went ahead and I ordered a SID chip from AliExpress, and I spent $40 on the chip. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that when I repair computers, I don't throw away the parts that I take out of them. I throw them in this little plastic container with, that just lets me accumulate all the bad parts. Now, viewers have asked me in the comments why I keep these chips. Part of it is I just like the way this looks. I mean, look at all the bad stuff I've taken out of computers over the years. As I repair more and more stuff, this collection just keeps growing. But there's another reason. Here's a bunch of PLA chips that are bad and I've taken out of 64s. Oh, except for this one on the top. And I think one day I want to make a video showing you guys what this looks like when bad PLA chips are in a 64 using the oscilloscope and the logic probe. PLAs, as an example, can fail in a bunch of different ways, and it's good to have a large collection of dead ones just to show all or a lot of the possible failure modes of these chips. So in this container, there's a lot of different kinds of chips. And as I said, the aforementioned PLAs die pretty frequently. But for the Commodore 64, I'm going to say after the PLA, the next most common failure, if not the most common failure, are SID chips. I actually have more bad SID chips than just these five, but I actually keep them installed inside Commodore 64s just because they're good for testing. I think people will generally agree that the SID chip is one of the things that makes the Commodore 64 such an amazing and brilliant machine. And when you have a Commodore 64 with no SID chip, well, it's kind of only half a computer. Well, that brings me right here to the chip that I bought from AliExpress. This is a SID chip, but it is an 8580R5, which is the later SID chip that's used on the 64 short boards. These chips are known to be much more reliable than these 6581s. These run on 12 volts. They get very hot in operation. These, on the other hand, only run off of 5 volts. So you can't plug one of these into a long board. If you do, you will kill this chip. But in a short board, this chip runs a lot cooler and hopefully it should be a lot more reliable. So I think it's time to break out a motherboard and let's see if this chip works. Here's a board you haven't seen on the channel yet and it's my one and only 64C short board. People have asked me actually why I never seem to work on these. One of the reasons is in the United States, these just were not very common. By the time the short board was introduced, it was late in the 80s, by that point, people had already moved over to 16-bit Atari and Amiga computers, and along with the PC and the Macintosh was really taking off. So these just didn't sell that well anymore, so they're not super common in the US. On the other hand, long boards in the bread bin cases are super, super common in the US. They sold so many of these machines and they're just sitting around in people's attics. But yeah, when it comes to the 64Cs, a lot less common. and. The couple that I actually do have, including the FieldFound 64, it's a 64C with a long board installed in it. Really the C in 64C stands for cost reduce. And what Commodore did is they took a lot of discrete logic chips, including the old PLA, that failure prone chip, and they combined it into this 64 pin IC here. Later 64Cs actually took the color RAM, which is this IC right here, and integrated that in as well. But those were very, very late in the 64C before it was discontinued. They also used a new process on all these chips, makes the whole thing run much cooler. Like this PLA chip right now, this machine's been on for a while. This is cold to the touch. This here is the VIC-2 chip, the graphics chip. On the original longboards, this ran at 12 volts and got really, really hot. 
this one runs at nine volts. And while I have heat sinks installed on it, it's barely, well, okay, it's a little bit warm, but not very much. So this right here is the SID socket. Now, what you see in here is not an actual Commodore SID chip, obviously. This is what's known as a SWIN SID. This uses an Atmel microcontroller, which is this small surface mount IC, to actually emulate a SID chip. This generates, probably using its AD converters, all of the different waveforms and whatnot that our SID chip does. But honestly, this works, but it is just an approximation of a SID chip, and it's not very good sounding, especially if you're used to the way a real SID chip sounds. One handy thing, though, is this works in both the short and long board, because this board ignores that 12 volt pin and simply runs on five volts, which is why it's compatible with either of these machines. Now, when I bought this 64C board, it had all of the chips pre-installed except for the VIC-2, the 8701 clock synthesizer, and the SID chip. Well, I luckily had an 8701 clock synthesizer and I luckily had the appropriate VIC-2 chip. This is the one that runs on nine volt for this machine but I didn't have a SID. So that's what prompted me to buy this ridiculously priced $40 chip. So in now the moment of truth, let's pull the SWIN SID out of this machine. Just pop it out of the socket like that. And let's put the China SID chip in the motherboard. Now I haven't tested this chip myself yet, so if this works or doesn't work, we'll be seeing this together. But I do have to say this definitely looks like a genuine article, not some kind of a rebadge. I would presume that this was actually pulled off a real Commodore 64, probably one that was sent to e-waste in some country somewhere in the world and ended up in China and they pulled this off and then listed it for sale because they know the ridiculous value of these chips. But the chip looks dirty and definitely looks real. And on the bottom, here's the markings and definitely made in Hong Kong. And the one thing that they definitely did do is they seem to have straightened out the legs and splayed them out as well. So I'm gonna to have to bend them to get them back into a socket. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's turn this on. Did I throw my $40 into the garbage or did I get a good ship? All right, computer boots up, good sign. You know what I need to do now? I need to run Donkey Kong Arcade. Let's see if we hear that great soundtrack. Okay, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Come on. Oh, it sounds. All right, turn the volume down. All right, so. So this appears to be working, at least with this game, and that has me very relieved. So it wasn't $40 down the tube. If we reset the machine and I go to Adrian's tools, I have the SID analyzer here, and let's run that. This should be a very comprehensive, oh no. I have on here the SID tester, which is a relatively comprehensive test suite made by Andrew Chalice, hackjunk.com. I'll put a link to this program in the description below. But let's run all tests here, and this just goes through all the possible waveforms that SID can make, and if anything is out of the ordinary, like one channel is burned out or partially failed, and that just gives us a good idea of how things go. Let me turn the volume back up. And this is where these tests of the filters, for instance, need to sound the same on all three channels. If one of the channels is problematic, you'll start to hear differences in these sounds. But so far, everything is sounding exactly the same across all three channels. So everything sounded just fine across all the channels. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record this entire test when I hit run all tests on this particular SID chip. I'm gonna do it on my SWIN SID, and I'll do it also on a long board with a 6581 SID that I know is good. And I'll put all three of those at the end of the video after my outro. So if you're interested in running this test yourself on your 64 and comparing how it sounds to my chips, then listen for that at the end of the video. All right, I've broken out the Commodore 1571 disk drive because it's time to load up the good old Sid Burner 7 disk. This disk is one I'm very familiar with the way the music sounds on. I've used this disk in demoing my FieldFound 64s and some of my other videos. And the reason why for the disk drive is because it actually doesn't work off the SDIEC. So you gotta use a physical disc. 
And in case you're wondering, I'm using Jaffe DOS, which is a Jiffy DOS mod, allows you to select what colors are the default, and it adds some Dolphin DOS features built in. And actually, the best thing is you can hit Shift F7, at least the way I have it configured, and it will give you a directory listing of whatever disk is in here, or if you're using the SDIEC, it allows you to navigate through the folders and things like that. Okay, let's run this and let's listen for the music. Turn up the volume. I've turned that down. So what's interesting is this is actually the first time I've ever heard Sid Burner's 7 on an actual 64C shortboard with the 8580 Sid chip. Before that, I've only ever heard this on the long boards and on the Swin Sid, of course, which doesn't sound very good at all. Now this disc was put out around 2003, according to what's scrolling by here. And I think really from what I'm told is that most people who do demo discs like this, they're using 64Cs for their development because in Europe, like I said before, these are really popular. So these SID tunes we're listening to are pretty much created on this SID chip. So this is probably more likely the way it's supposed to sound based on what the creator heard on his or her machine. Now, I've only heard this on 6581s, and while it's definitely similar sounding, I do notice differences on this intro song alone. And that's because I've listened to it so many times across so many different machines as a real test for my machines. But this chip, yeah, it sounds slightly different. I mean, I couldn't put my finger on exactly what it is, but just some of the sound effects where it's mixing the tones together, it's just a little bit different. But I don't think that's a fault in this chip. I think this chip is working fine. I really think that's just the filter behavior of this chip is different than the older ones. And that's what this is, uh, everyone has pointed this out to me on the internet. These chips don't sound exactly the same. And some people, they didn't like this newer revision of the chip. But I think a lot of the newer games and demos that are made currently are done with this chip in mind. So if you're using the old longboard, you're not hearing it exactly as the creator intended. Now, of course, there's one other huge elephant in the room. Now, this machine is currently running at 60 hertz. It's configured for NTSC. And that makes SID tunes play not only a little bit faster, like the notes play more quickly, but the, the frequency that it's all tuned to is also different. And you can hear the difference if you run the SIDs, like the one on the intro disc here, through a player on your computer and you force it into PAL or NTSC mode, you will hear the tone shift and the fact that the NTSC just plays everything faster. Now, I'm used to listening to this on an NTSC machine, so on a PAL machine it would sound slow to me. Now, I'll turn the volume back up and let's load this disc here. It's going to boot into the song menu and let's hear this first track. All right, so that tune, which I don't, I don't particularly love, sorry to Larity who composed it, it uh, sounds basically the same to me as the other 6581. Now, using my controller here, let's switch down to one song that I am very familiar, and that's Legend Intro. And yes, this is a Nintendo controller. It was one that I had where someone had already cut the connector off the cable, so don't worry, I didn't destroy anything. And what I did is I took an Atari joystick, one of those flashback controller, cables and I rewired the inside in a way that is reversible and now this works on the Commodore 64 and I gotta say I love it because I'm a huge fan of this d-pad it just brings back all the memories I hate all the joysticks that were on these computers sorry I know that's going to be controversial but those little things that everyone uses on these I never liked them I had them they always hurt my hand this feels very ergonomic for me and something I did which I love is this button here, the B button is the fire button for the 64, but the A button I wired to be the same as pushing up. So all those games on the 64, and if I push this button now, you see the list scrolls, and it's the same as pushing up, right? And that's because all those games on the 64 that make you push up to jump because there's only one button. Well, on this controller, I can jump using this button. I gotta say, it's a fantastic mod, and it makes playing these games so much easier. But let's load up Legend Intro. This is a song that I love and I've heard a lot of times on the other 64s. Let's hear how this sounds. First, I'll turn the volume up. And 
I've loaded the song, takes a second to load. Here we go. So right off the bat, I have to talk over the music. That kind of up and down hissing sound sounds different. And so does this, that, that sort of drum beat sound there. It sounds very different than the other Sid. And I think I really do prefer the other Sid. It's more like a big drum sound. Here it just sounds kind of weird and high pitched. Now this part sounds different too. All right, so yeah, so like I said, uh, that drum sound, that, that big boom sound, sounds very different on this set. And that kind of sound it was making also sounds quite different. I dare say I really prefer the other one, but hey, I'd say that this chip, again, China, shocking, it's working just fine. All right, let's try the great game Doc Cosmos. If you haven't tried this game, this came out in 2019. I really recommend it. It's quite excellent. This is again where I was saying that this joystick is super great because the fire button, which doesn't do anything right now, when you push the jump button, it's the same as pushing up and it makes navigating around a real cinch. So the whole point of this game is that you jump between current time and 1982 right here. And when you're in 82 mode, the music is much more simplified, kind of like Commodore 64 games were in 1982. Oh, well, and the graphics, of course, as well. And you can swap back and forth between the two time frames, and the different way you complete the levels is you have to do it in the correct time frame. So this is the simple 82 music. Can I push the button here to switch back? Here we are back in 1982 again. All right, so the SID appears to be working perfectly, but no China test is complete without taking some 99% IPA, spraying it on the chip, and then rubbing it with one of these cotton swabs. Let's see if I get that black paint coming off like I did with those fake chips from China. Nope, just a little bit of dirt, <laughs> which is fine. Look at that, cotton swab looks totally good and nothing has changed. The moss markings are still clear as day. When I had those Alliance fake chips or rebadged ones, when I rubbed them, most of the printing came off and the cotton swab came back completely black because I think they had put some kind of paint on it. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. My gamble in spending $40, which is a ton of money, for a single chip from China of unknown quality it paid off in this case. Do I recommend running out to AliExpress or eBay and buying SID chips? Not really. A lot of people have said that they have had bad luck 
and bought SID chips that were rebadged, fake, didn't work, all those things. The only thing I was thinking is that AliExpress has a really good policy for disputes, and if the chip was bad, I have a feeling I probably would have got my money back. And for sure that China doesn't have a bunch of Commodore 64s lying around, so they can't test these chips. So if they say they're tested and good and it's coming directly from China, really take that with a grain of salt. But anyways, in this case, it worked out for me, and I'm really glad because I hope that this SID chip will last me a long time, unlike a lot of those 6581 chips, which I assume are all going to die. Anyways, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do. You can hit that thumbs down button. Subscribe for more videos. There'll be lots more in the future, including stuff that's not Commodore 64 related. I do have more stuff in the pipeline. Just seem to be on a bit of a 64 kick lately. And I'd love to hear your comments and your suggestions down in the comment section below. I read all of them. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night. Goodbye. So terrible. <laughs>
Woo! <laughs>